What's going on everybody? Johnny Bannon here, Trepid Technologies. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. And let's go ahead and get started in our domain 3.2 section of our Network Plus N10-009 exam. Let me get my face out of the way here. Totally not important for some learning. Okay, so here's the objective. So domain 3.2 is going to be all about network monitoring. Um, and what we're going to go over here is SNMP. We're not going to go into it in great detail like I would like to. Um, but that's okay. We're going to go over a little bit of net flow, packet captures, uh, what you do when you aggregate data and what you're looking at with that baseline metrics. going to go over uh, SIM, SIM, or S-I-E-M, some API integration, and then other network discovery solutions. So as a network administrator or network engineer, you're going to be sitting typically in a NOC. I'm just talking about a basic network engineer's role. You're sitting in a NOC. And a lot of times, if you're not actively troubleshooting, if you're not setting up sites, architecturing or deploying uh, big campus networks, you're not in the middle of migrations, uh, there wasn't a big outage, you're doing a lot of monitoring. You're sitting in the NOC, monitoring, uh, getting some telemetry, and then making the network better based off that monitoring and telemetry. Or maybe you're just at a NOC where as long as it's green, like maybe in an OT situation, operational technologies, hey, it's green, we're going to leave it alone. Well, how do we monitor? How do we monitor our network infrastructure, firewalls, switches, routers, access points, wireless lane controllers, our AAA servers, right? If, how do we network that? How do we monitor that network infrastructure? So one of the tools in our toolbox is SNMP, the Simple Network Management Protocol. This has been around for a while. So SNMP in its base form, it's going to allow you to monitor and send what's called SNMP get messages to receive some information on an, what we call an OID, an object identifier of that system. A typical pull, right, from the SNMP server to an SNMP agent, which would be your switches and routers and network infrastructure, would be, hey, what is your CPU threshold at? That SNMP agent would respond to the SNMP server or SNMP manager saying, hey, my CPU threshold is at this at this current time. And we use what's called the management information base. It's a database that contains information of the network device, such as the configuration, the metrics, and the status. So when we send an SNMP get message from the server to the SNMP agent, essentially what we're saying is, hey, I want to monitor your CPU, so I'm looking for this object identifier. And if you're at the SNMP agent, if your MIB, your management information base, has an OID, I can respond to my SNMP server or manager. That's at a very high overview but low level how SNMP works. Now we're going to have SNMP software that we're going to have to install on a server. So again, the SNMP manager could be something like SolarWinds, PRTG, or some of the, that's what I've used, right, as far as SNMP network management software, okay? And what you're going to do from the client side or the SNMP agent is you're going to configure SNMP on that switch or router to allow it to be pulled from the SNMP server. So that may include some authentication, which we're going to get into with SNMP version 1 and version 2. The only authentication we have is community strings if we want it, but everything is sent in clear text. With SNMP version 3, we're going to add that encryption authentication. Some of the other things you're going to have to configure from the SNMP agent, the client side, would just be, hey, here's the IP address of that SNMP manager or network management system, and then we just go from there. Now, from the SNMP server side, we may begin to create our polls. What do we want to know? Maybe we want to send an SNMP uh, get request for tunnels that are, you know, our GRE or IPsec tunnels. Whatever the case is, we can now start setting up SNMP polls. So here's a very, something I do to go over the SNMP architecture, right? So beyond just pulling and getting information, SNMP does have some advanced features like SNMP set messages, which can actually use SNMP to configure something. That's where we get right access, right, to the, on the SNMP agent. So we have the SNMP manager that's going to contain our network management server or software, and then the SNMP manager software that we're going to be interacting with that's going to be like a web-based GUI, right? From there, the SNMP manager is going to send SNMP get messages. That's our polls to receive information from the SNMP agent. 
Additionally, if we have it set up, if we have write access from SNMP manager to SNMP agent, we could do SNMP set messages that will actually configure that SNMP agent. Now from the SNMP agent side, obviously we're going to have SNMP get replies, right? Replying to the polls from our SNMP manager. But we also have some uh, something advanced that we can set up from the agent side called an SNMP trap, an inform message that will automatically send the SNMP manager information if we set it up on the agent side. So that's kind of in the reverse, right? Where traditionally SNMP basic is the manager pulling the agent, but we if we want stuff, if we want information quicker, right? Like let's say hey, interface goes down, we don't want to wait for that 30 second polling interval from the manager that we may have set up. Maybe we want the agent to tell us right away. That's setting up an SNMP trap or inform message. And we can have some configuration on the agent based off like a syslog message that then says, oh, if we get a syslog message saying that interface went down, we are going to automatically send our SNMP manager that information. That's a, that's a trap message or an inform message. Now, an SNMP trap message from agent to the server is, uh, when we say unreliable, what we mean by that is that we don't need a response, right? We're not expecting a response. With the SNMP inform message, we're going to verify that it made it there by asking the manager to respond to us so we can ensure that we, it made it. And if we don't get that response, we're going to keep sending, right? Another note about SNMP is that it runs on UDP port 161. So it's going to be UDP port 161 if you need to open that up in firewalls or just, you know, uh, to know the port number for the exam. Here's that management information base. So from the SNMP agent, when we get pulled from the SNMP manager and they're going to be asking for a certain OID, that OID is going to correlate to an interface, CPU, hardware, something a part of that system, right? And we can see this M the management information base, how it's laid out. So every, like let's say we're looking at the CPU of a Cisco Catalyst 3850 switch. It's going to have its own OID, right? And maybe that OID is going to be labeled 1.3.6.1.4.1.9.2, right? So we can kind of look at this MIB tree here. Another thing I want to show you guys is this MIB browser that I downloaded on my MacBook that can also show you what the OID would be if I'm looking at a system. Actually, I want to look at an interface and let's just say I want to look at the interface description. There's the OID. So if this is technically MIB browser on my SNMP manager server, and I want to pull this address, my SNMP get request would have this OID in there, and my SNMP agent would respond with the interface description. Okay? So pretty cool tool. If you set up SNMP on your MacBook, if you enable it, or if you have SNMP enabled any device in your local network, you can use this MIB browser to do some manual polls there, and you'll get a response in the result table here. Let's head back to my slides here. Okay, so we talked about the different versions of SNMP as well. So we have SNMP version 1 and version 2. So version 1 was very basic. Uh, with version 2, we got like bulk messages where we were able to do a little bit more advanced features but as far as security goes, they're the same. They don't have any encryption. They do have basic authentication called a community string. That's essentially just a password, guys. But it gets sent in plain text. So SNMP version 1 and 2, all communication, the get, the set messages, the trap, the inform messages from the agent, they have no encryption and everything is sent in plain text. However, there is an option to do authentication with what's called a community string that's going to be sent to that SNMP message. That's just a password, right? That has to match from manager to SNMP agent. Now, with version 3, that's where we did uh, enhance the security. So, at SNMP version 3, you're going to get encryption and authentication, and there's going to be certain levels. So, you can set up SNMP version 3 with uh, what's called no auth, no priv, that just has a username that's going to get sent in plain text. Then we have auth, no priv, that's going to be have authentication that's going to hash our password that so it's not going to get sent just in plain clear it's going to send a hash of it right and then we have snmp version 3 auth priv which is going to have authentication that's hashed and then also aes or triple des encryption sent 
to actually turn that plain text SNMP messages, packets, traffic into ciphertext. Okay, SNMP traps. So these are messages sent from a network device to the monitoring system, the SNMP manager, when a specific event occurs, and that's something that you would have to configure. So if we wanted that agent to alert the NMS right away when the CPU reaches a 99% threshold, at that agent we can configure that. In Cisco, I would do it like this. I would have syslog errors uh, coming to my console line, right? And that would make an SNMP trap based off that syslog console message so that if I pops up, we get a message saying our CPU is at a certain threshold, my trap would automatically be sent, and I would send that SNMP manager uh, that SNMP message, right? Saying, hey, my CPU is at 99%. Okay, so moving on to different network monitoring. That's not as robust as an SNMP environment or architecture using solar winds or anything like that. It's packet captures. So uh, from the network perspective, we can use things like Wireshark or maybe TCP dump on the bash terminal of like a Linux machine to actually do packet captures. Now Wireshark is going to be how we look at these .pcap files. So .pcap is going to be the file extension. That's us looking at the actual traffic coming across the wire. So Wireshark is something that's free to download. And let's go ahead and look at Wireshark on my system here. I'm going to choose to capture my Wi-Fi NIC card. And we can see all the traffic coming through here. Okay. Flow data. What we're saying, what it's talking about here, flow data is within the actual exam objectives. But from a network engineering perspective, this is NetFlow. So this is something that you might have to configure at the actual interface level, configure some flow caches. Some systems have NetFlow automatically. In my screenshot here, that's my Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro showing me some NetFlow data. That's going to show me the protocols being used, the applications that are most used, uh, where my top bandwidth is. Uh, so what we mean by that is essentially where's all my bandwidth going, right? What's my most used application? And this allows me to gain some insight uh, into what's happening on my network. What is my top talker? What are my users looking at? Baseline metrics. So maybe we want to get some baseline metrics from our uh, systems and maybe we integrate that into like a SIME, like something like Splunk, that then we build uh, baseline anomalies after. So let's say our baseline for our network switches or the access layer on room one, floor one of one of our outsides is always at 40%. Well, if we see a big spike in it, Maybe whatever monitoring system we have set up will alert us of that. And maybe that alert comes in email or a Slack message or a Teams message. Okay, log aggregation. So log aggregation as far as a network. We have a lot of different ways we can do this. So we want to aggregate our logs into a centralized location and then be able to perform some queries against them. So syslog collector. So syslog is a protocol that's used to send logs from network devices to a central log server or just at the actual CLI, like what we see in Cisco. And we can set up a syslog server and set up our actual network devices to forward syslog messages to that server over port 514. SIME, Security Information and Event Management. SIME systems, popular one like Splunk, they're, they are log aggregation. They're a tool to aggregate log that big data to then have an administrator or cybersecurity analyst build dashboards and query against all that information to do real-time reporting. You see this a lot in cybersecurity incident uh, handling, but we can also use it from the network perspective. We can also gather information and logs from our network devices to do some real-time monitoring using our SIM or SIEM system. So syslog, here's the different severity levels and just a quick diagram of how we may set it up where we send uh, syslog messages to a centralized syslog server that then us as an admin can either get alerts set up or we can monitor. And then we have some SIM dashboards here. So this is Splunk dashboards, which is like probably the industry leader in SIM or SIM. Actually, I know it is. If we look at their uh, the Gartner chart, I believe is what it's called. Um, and we have dashboards built off the relevant information that's useful to us. And then you see here how a SIME system may work. We may have a SIME server here that's going and getting all the information from all of its clients. And then from the Security Operations Center of our, or our NOC, our Network Operations Center, we're viewing the relevant dashboards to us about our enterprise. Okay, some other network monitoring. So we may want to have some API integration. 
So APIs allow network monitoring tools to integrate with other systems. Good example of this is let's say we're using like an IPAM system like NetBox as our source of truth for IP address management. And maybe we have a dynamic library for our Ansible playbooks that can constantly be updated by what's in our IPAM when we run playbooks against our network devices. So we can kind of use API integration in a lot of our network services, systems, and applications to start a good infrastructure as code environment for troubleshooting, monitoring, managing, and getting to a good baseline. Port mirroring. So port mirroring is a feature that copies network traffic from one port to another. In bulk, we call this span. There's three different ways we can deploy it. We can have local span on a single switch, remote span between switches, and ER span, which actually will send span information over like a GRE tunnel via layer three. So the basic though, let's say uh, we got VLAN 10 here. We have a user hooked up and we want to do a pa complete pa packet capture. We can set up span to duplicate the traffic from this port to this port over VLAN 10. And then from our computer here, we can run Wireshark to actually investigate what packet or what data is coming across that interface. Okay, and the last thing we're going to look at is network discovery. So network discovery is the process of identifying and mapping devices on a network. And there's two main types. We're going to have ad hoc and schedule. Where ad hoc is just something like, hey, let's go look at this right now. Let me bring up Nmap on a CLI, Terminal, Bash Shell, or maybe Zenmap, the GUI version. Or scheduled. We can have automated scans, right? Maybe that's every six hours we're going to scan our network to see if there's any open ports that somehow got open that leave us vulnerable. Traffic analysis. Traffic analysis involves monitoring and interpreting the flow of data through the network. This can be done using NetFlow like we looked at or looking at things like Nmap or Nessus scans. All right, before we do our quiz time, I just want to show you guys what Zenmap looks like. So I have my local subnet here. I'm just doing a quick scan. And maybe, can I zoom in here? Uh, let's see. Don't think I can zoom in here, so hopefully you guys can see this. But you can see it's going to quickly scan my network and show me the open ports on all these devices. So pretty cool way to quickly look at any vulnerabilities or just to see what's on the network and what ports are open. All right, guys, now let's go and do our quiz. So at our learning management system here, I'm going to scroll to our Network Plus course. I'm going to come to our lessons here. I'm going to scroll down to domain 3.2.1. Scroll down, and let's go ahead and take our domain quiz. Let me zoom in here so this is clear. Question 1. Which of the following best describes port mirroring? I'm going to go with A, a technique used to duplicate network traffic for monitoring or analysis. Question 2. Why is baseline monitoring important for network management? We need a baseline so we, we can start seeing what true anomalies are, right? And there's a lot of like new products out there like SASE or SASE appliances, new firewalls that integrate machine learning to do this automatically for us, establish baselines, and then we can go in and configure what we believe may be anom anomalies or have the AI do it ourselves. Okay, question three. Which version SNMP provides encryption and authentication for secure communication? That's going to be SNMP version three. Question four. Which of the following best describes flow data in network monitoring? Okay, so it's not an API. It's not log aggregation. It's not going to analyze individual network packets. I believe it's going to be A, a representation of traffic patterns between devices, showing which device is communicating and how much data is being transferred. Remember, we can use something like NetFlow for that. Question five. What is the primary advantage of using SNMP version 3 over SNMP version 2? Security, right? Security. Question six, what is the primary function of a syslog collector? That's just going to be, that's our syslog server, right? But that's just collecting all the sys, all the logs from any device that can use syslog. Again, port 514. Question seven, SNMP port 161. 
What is the role of the management information base in SNMP? That's going to define the structure, right, of our OIDs, right, our object identifiers. It's like an open, it's a standard, right, that any vendor can use. Question eight, which of the following tools is primarily used for analyzing logs and detecting security incidents by correlating data from multiple sources? I'm going to go with SIME or SIM. All right, awesome. So we got 100%. Now we're cooking. So I want to thank everyone for viewing. And if you're interested in getting access to our learning management system, click that link in the description below to purchase our self-paced course. And if you like this content, like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next video.